Hello and welcome to or back to my channel. In today's video, I'll be teaching you how to crochet a simple Palestine flag, which you can customize into whatever size that you want. And uh, let me know in the comments what other tutorials you guys want. I also have this adorable watermelon water bottle holder. And uh, let me know if you want a tutorial for that or any other watermelon related things. And yeah, let's get started. Alright, so this is the Palestine flag that this tutorial will go over how to make. However, you can also easily make this into whatever size you want. I have made a really small version. It's so small you can hardly tell that's a triangle. With the back side having a safety pin so you can easily pin it onto a shirt or a bag. I've made a size in between these sizes that could also be a pin a little bit bigger. And I've made sizes that are even bigger than this that you could carry at a protest. You could pin it to the back of like a jean jacket or put it on a wall. And I've made an absolutely huge flag but you can make it even bigger than this one just depending on how long you make this chain for and how many rows up that you do. Well, I have it all calculated out here. So this is the standard size. The bottom row would be a chain of six and you would have it three rows tall, making each green, white, and black row, only one row long. Then you can, if you multiply the dimensions all by two, you can get to the next big size, which is four centimeters by nine centimeters, and it looks like this. And that would mean you start with a chain of 12, and each time you make a color, you make it two rows tall. And again, if you multiplied all of these dimensions by four, then you get to 24 uh, stitches long and each row, each color is four rows tall, adding up to 12 rows. And this one is six centimeters by 15 centimeters, which is what we're making in this tutorial today. But you can make it even bigger like this flag with a chain of 36 at the bottom and 18 rows tall or like this big flag, you could start with a chain of 48 and make it 24 rows tall. And these are the dimensions of these ones. So the big one is 15 centimeters by 37.5 centimeters. And this one that I just showed you is 10.5 centimeters by 24 centimeters. So here is a little picture of these dimensions for you and the previous dimensions. So here's the number for all of the chains and the number of rows. Here's for each stripe the number of rows. And here's the total dimensions of each flag in case you want them. But you can experiment with whatever number of chains and however, row, however many rows tall you'd like and just follow the same steps as I show in this tutorial, starting with a chain and making single crochets until you get the base done. And I will explain how to make the triangle uh, later on. For this tutorial, you will need white, red, black, and green yarn. It doesn't matter the size of the yarn, the thickness, or anything. Just use whatever size hook it says on the package of your yarn. And you will also need a hook, scissors, and a yarn needle to thread in the end. For this tutorial, I'm using a 3.75 millimeter crochet hook, but feel free to use a bigger or smaller hook depending on your yarn. For example, I made this flag with a bigger four millimeter hook and then I switched to a smaller hook so it was more tight. Here it can be a bit see-through at spots and I don't feel like it's tight enough and this one looks much better. All right, so we're gonna start with our green and for each of the flags, it's the same process. The only thing that is different is the number of rows and how long you chain for in the beginning. And of course the triangle would just be smaller. For this size flag, we're gonna chain 24. If you're doing a different size flag, just chain the number that's at the bottom of the dimension. Thank you. 
So this is what it looks like after I chain 24 and we're gonna chain one extra. So this will be for turning. So when we start making our single crochets, we're gonna skip the first one and we're gonna go into the second chain. So we're skipping the first one and we go right into the second one. Now we're just gonna make single crochets all the way down and we should have 24 in total. So we're gonna yarn over, pull it through the first loop and come back out. We'll have two loops on our hook. We yarn over again and pull through both loops. Then we go into our next chain. So the one that has the big holes where we just went into and we go into the next one. Yarn over, pull through the first loop, come back out, yarn over, pull through both loops. Repeat this all the way down and you should have 24 or the number of the bottom length. So this is what it should look like after your first row and we're going to make a total of four rows with green, four rows with white, and then four rows with black. So to start the next row, we're just going to chain one. So we yarn over and we pull through the loop on our hook. Then we flip our work to the left and I like to weave in my end as I go so I don't have to weave it in later and I just place it along the top as I crochet. So to start the next row we just go into the first loop and you should look to make sure that you have both loops of the V on there so you can just look at the top of your work instead of looking at the side and it's much easier to tell if you went through both loops of the V. Then I lay my strand that I want to weave in along the top and then we're just going to yarn over pull through two loops on our hook yarn over and go through both of them. Then we go into our next loop, check that we went through both V's, keep laying that extra strand along the top, or if that's too difficult just leave it out and we'll weave it in later. Pull through, two loops on our hook, pull through both. So continue making the same single crochet stitch all the way down and weaving in the end until it's all the way woven in. This is what it should look like after the second row. Again, we're gonna do the same thing to start the third row. Chain one, turn our work, and start making single crochets in each stitch all the way down. Continue this and I'll meet you at the end of the row. This is what it should look like after the third row. Again, we're gonna chain one, turn our work, and finish the last row of the green. And I'll meet you when we have one stitch left, which is when we're going to switch to the color white. So this is what it should look like when you make it down after four rows of green. I have one more stitch left in this row. I'm just going to go into that stitch, yarn over and pull through. And then I'm going to lay down my work. 
grab my scissors and cut about a finger's length of yarn away. To start with the white, we're just going to take part of the tail and fold it in half, just like this. And we're just going to put it on our hook, kind of use our finger to keep it there, and grab the both ends in our left hand and pull it through. Then we're going to tie the two short ends together. So I just tie it like a normal knot. Don't do it too tight, just kind of snug. So that's what it should look like. Now to start the white, we're going to do the same thing as before. We're just going to chain one and flip our work and make single crochets all the way down. And if you want, you can weave in the ends as you go. So again, I like to take in the tails and lay them on top of the row that I'm working on and then just crochet, making single crochets as normal all the way down. So I'll meet you at the end of the row. This is what it should look like when you get to the end of the first row. And again, to start the next one, chain one, flip your work, and make single crochets all the way down. Repeat this for three more rows until you have four rows of white total, and I'll meet you back. So you should have one stitch left of the white. Remember to go in, yarn over, pull through, and stop when you have two loops left on your hook, and that's what we're gonna use to attach the black. And remember to trim about a finger's length of yarn away. To attach the black, fold it in half, put your hook through, and pull it through the two loops and then just tie a knot with the two short strings. And it should look like this. To start the four rows of black, chain one, flip your work, and make single crochets all the way down and I will be weaving in my ends as I go. I'll meet you at the end of the row. This is what it should look like after one row of black. And if, your is, if yours is not looking like a rectangle and instead the sides are kind of getting shorter, just make sure you're not missing a last stitch, so if you flip it up at the top, you might see another V. So here I still have one more stitch. So make sure to try to get those last stitches. They can be tricky to spot sometimes, and you can count along the top to make sure that you have 24 Vs. So at the end of the row, chain one, flip your work, and repeat. Just make 24 single crochets all the way down. Repeat this for four total rows of the black, and I'll meet you back after the base of the flag is complete. So this is what it should look like after you have made four rows of each green, white, and black. And in the last uh, stitch, it should be complete, and we're just going to chain one, and then just pull up our yarn about the length of our finger, and we're just going to cut inside the loop, pull out the yarn that's attached to the yarn ball, and with the remaining string, we're just going to pull it tight. And there we have officially completed the base of the flag. And I'm just going to use my yarn needle to weave in my last end here. And feel free if you have other ends that you haven't woven in yet to do that also. So to weave in the end, I'm just going to go through the stitches in the top row. So it looks like this, and on the back side also like this. And then I'm just going to pull it through and trim off the extra. I've gone through about five stitches or so. Alright, so the green is on the bottom, and we're going to start making the triangle with the red. So depending on the size flag that you're making, 
you're going to chain a different amount for the base of the triangle but the base of the triangle should be about two stitches less than the number of rows that you have. So here we have four stitches each, which adds up to 12 rows. So we're gonna be chaining 10 for the base of our triangle. This is because if we don't chain less, it might just look like a messy triangle like this, but we wanna leave room to add this border along the edge of the triangle that makes it look a bit cleaner. So we're just gonna start with a slip knot. and we're going to chain 10. So this is going to be for the base of our triangle and then we're going to need to make one extra chain for the side. So it's technically 11 but when we go through we're going to skip that 11th one and go into the 10th and make single crochets all the way down where there should be 10 in total. So here I have made 10 single crochets and in order to make a triangle we need to make sure that the sides start decreasing and we're going to make a point eventually. So for the next row we're going to chain one, turn our work and we're going to start with a decrease. So we're going to make a decrease by going into the first stitch, yarn over, pull through, two loops are on our hook, go into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, three loops on our hook, then yarn over and pull through all three. So we basically just turned two stitches into one stitch. Then make single crochets all the way down until there are two stitches left and we'll repeat the decrease at the end. Alright, so I have two stitches left. We're going to go into the first one, yarn over, pull through, two loops on our hook, go into the last stitch, might be a little tricky, yarn over, pull through, three loops are on our hook, yarn over, pull through all three. So now you should have eight stitches left. The next row we're just going to make eight single crochets, so we're not making any decreases. So no matter what size triangle that you're making for what size Palestine flag, you're going to make a decrease every other row until you get to a point. So for this row we didn't make any decreases, but for the next row we will. So chain one, turn your work, and start with a decrease at the beginning and at the end. So I have two stitches left and I'm going to make another decrease at the end. Chain one, turn your work, and just make single crochets without any decreases for the next row. Chain one, for the next row, we're going to start with a decrease. Then continue to single crochet as normal until you have two stitches left. And I'm making my decrease. And as you can see, our triangle is starting to get shorter on both sides. 
chain one, don't make any decreases. Chain one, start with the decrease. And because we have only four left, it's actually just two decreases in a row. And for the next one, we're gonna chain one, turn our work, and I'm gonna go straight into a decrease again for the last two, turning everything into one stitch. So now, as you can see, we have our triangle, but it's not with a nice finished border. So we're just going to make that. So in order to do that, we start with a chain one and we're just gonna go down the side. There's not really any specific place to add the single crochets. So I just go about one every single row and just make single crochets. So I'm going into random places along the edge. You really cannot mess this up, so don't worry. When you get to the corner, we're gonna make three single crochets in every corner. This is gonna allow them to look more like actual corners. So don't forget to put three single crochets in each corner and then continue as normal single crocheting uh, along the bottom. Here there's a more defined place where to put it than before. And now I'm at the left corner, so I'm going to put three single crochets. And I'm just going to finish up along the last side. Again, there's not really a good place. You just kind of go one single crochet into each row. it to the top we're gonna finish off with three single crochets into the top of the triangle going into the same stitch three times and then to really finish we're gonna go into the next stitch and we're just gonna put a slip stitch so in order to do that go into the stitch yarn over and pull through and through the loop on your hook Then we're going to chain one, pull it up, and cut through the loop. And that's the triangle, so we're just going to finish by sewing it on. Remember the green is on the bottom. Take a long tail of red, enough that we'll wrap around the triangle, thread it through your needle, and just kind of hold uh, the red along the edge, and I like to start in a corner, so just go up through the green and up through a stitch of the red of the border, pull it up, leave a little tail, adjust the triangle and then go down through the next stitch and down through the green and then we're gonna tie a little knot So I just adjust the triangle as I go because we want the point of the triangle to be about in the middle of the white. So now we're going to go up and through the next stitch. And down through the next one. 
Just continuing this all the way around the triangle. And I've gotten to the point where I had my previous end, so I'm just going to tuck that under the rest of it because I don't feel like weaving it in. And just continue this all the way around and I'll meet you at the end. When you get to the end, you can just go down through the next stitch. And on the back we'll tie a knot by going underneath a stitch. and pulling through, ignore the string I have here. And then we're gonna go under the loop, pull it tight, and then we're just going to repeat that again. So go through the same spot, make that loop, and then just go under and through the loop and pull it tight. Then you can just go underneath and in between the triangle and the base of the flag and pull it through. And that will have the end hidden. Repeat it with the next end. And then you can just cut off the excess tails. And congratulations on finishing your Palestine flag. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Let me know in the comments what other videos you guys are interested in. And I'll see you in the next one.